Good morning, everyone. I'm Dave. Welcome back to the wee hours where I suffer from periodic bouts of insomnia and play games to pass the time. We are back playing Bounty Train in the last part. We kind of opened up the story a little bit, got the feel of it, and basically we are trying to save our railroad. And the way we're going to do that is finding all our siblings and getting their shares in the railroad so we can beat our competitor. We are in New York and we have a task to give this urgent letter to Jack. Jack Goodman, and I'm just going to go ahead and assume that that's Jack right there on the station. So, Jack, what have you got to say? Yes, I have a letter for you. And we're done. That was it. Easy enough. The next task that we have is to obtain a caboose carriage, hire a train guard, and arrive in Buffalo. The problem with that is we don't have a whole lot of money. If we go over to the depot, let's see what we got going for caboose carriages. Extra small caboose is 280 That's not bad. That's a good price, but that's not going to leave us a lot left to hire a train guard. If we go to the station, Sandro here... Yeah, you're looking for a job. Tell me more about yourself. What do you do? You're, uh, you got some combat, and you are a, ex you're an extinguisher, which is good. We can put out fires on the train if those come up. But I think we had our eye on Ephraim here, who is a little more of a sharpshooter. Yeah, he's a snipery guy. Unfortunately, he costs $430. So I think what we're going to have to do... Do we have any cargo on board right now? No, we don't. Let's do a couple of quick runs. We could do, say, a New York to Boston or a New York to Portland run and see if we can generate some quick cash. And maybe we can pick up a passenger or two while we're doing this. Just really get some quick money going together. Don't think we want to take steel because that is super heavy. Oh, the price in Boston for steel, though, is extraordinary. We could make a really quick profit doing that. Yeah, you know what? Let's take that steel. How much are we actually going to be able to carry? Not much, because our little engine can only haul so much. All right, we can take three loads of steel to Boston. That's fine. Let's do that. Let's see if there's just maybe anyone who needs a ride to Boston. Martha, you need to go to Portland. Uh, how long is, do you need to get there? You need 10 days to get there. I, oh, you know what? That steel on board, we're going to be moving real slow. That's probably not a good idea to take her, and it doesn't look like anyone else needs a ride. Uh, Joseph, remind me what your problem is. Uh, you got, oh, what is your problem? You've got a stack of papers. Not just any papers, Gayetti's medicated paper. It's my invention set to change the way we go about our sanitary business. So you've invented toilet paper. Well, you know what, Joseph? That is a good thing to invent. I'm, I'm glad you came up with that in 1860. I, I kind of thought we would have invented that before that, but... I need someone to deliver a shipment of my latest invention to Cincinnati. Oh, Cincinnati's a long way away. Um, I don't know if we're going to do that for you, Joseph. If it proves popular there, my paper's fame will spread across the country. I'll pay you well for your trouble if you get it there in a timely fashion. When you say timely fashion, you're saying 25 days is what we've got to do that. Hmm... Joseph, let me just check how long it takes to get to Cincinnati and what rail lines we're going to have to unlock to get there. So Cincinnati is... I God, my, I, my knowledge of American geography is limited. They, they just don't teach us geography in school. They really don't. Uh, okay, Cincinnati is over here. We've got... We got a lot of locked railroads between here and there. 700 to unlock that. 300 to unlock that and 200 to unlock that and that seems to be the most direct route between here and Cincinnati yeah I don't know if that's going to happen Joseph I really like your toilet paper idea but I just don't see that happening in in your 25 day timeline so no we are in fact off to Boston to sell this steel that's what we're going to do and off we go how long is that going to take two days no problem no problem and in Boston, we can unload this steel for a nice, healthy profit that we should do very well with this. Very well. Yeah, 252 profit. Well done, us. Now, is there anything we can take back to New York and make a decent profit on? How about jewelry? Oh, yeah, jewelry is going to do really well. 
really well. Buying an 87, selling at 225. Yes, sir. And we can load up fully with that. We can take five pieces. Let's go back to New York. And then when we unload that, we should have enough money to do what we need to do. I'm hoping at least. Okay, in New York, let's unload our jewelry. How much do we make on that? Oh, look at that, 690 profit. That was a great little run, that steel and that jewelry. All right, now we're in much better shape to do what we need to do. Let's go back to the depot. And is the small caboose the only caboose we've got? We can, oh, we get the extra small and the small. Now the small is 600, that's a bit of a hit. But that holds two crew members. The extra small only holds one. What else you got for sale here while I'm here? What's that, a passenger? Okay, I don't really want to mess around with passengers right now. Small cargo, that's what we've already got. Was that a medium cargo? Yeah, that medium cargo is nice. That holds 10 pieces of cargo as opposed to our five, but it's kind of pricey and we don't really need it right at the moment. I guess, you know what, let's just take the extra small caboose for right No, yeah, 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 we're gonna take the extra small, yes. And what I'm actually gonna do is store the passenger container right now. We're gonna keep that in New York, so we can come back to New York anytime and pick that up again. But that's just gonna enable us to travel a little lighter, which means we can store more goods on our train. So back to the station, let's take another look. Remind me what you do, Andrew, what's your deal? You are you were kind of a melee guy, weren't you? Yeah, you've got a pistol and a club and your skill is stunning people. That is delightful, but I really think I want a sharpshooter. I, I want a snipery kind of guy. You're pricey, Ephraim, but I think, I think you're our guy. Plus, you have a fabulous hat. A fabulous hat. So, yep, let's hire Ephraim. And Ephraim, why don't you live on the caboose? There you go. There you go. Live there. So Walter's covering the front. Ephraim's covering the back. If we get into combat, that should go okay. And now we've just got to get to Buffalo. So what is the best way to get to Buffalo? Oh, there's only one lock between here and Buffalo, and it only costs 200 That's not bad. That's not bad. Let's do... I just like to have a little bit of a buffer zone in terms of money. Let's just do a real quick Boston to New York run. Now, steel did very well the last time. Is it still doing well? Yeah, prices dropped a little bit, but that's okay. And yeah, see, without that passenger car, we can actually take five loads of steel instead of three. So definitely worthwhile storing the passenger car. We can mess around with passengers a little later when we have a better engine. Let's get off to Boston and travel there. Unload our steel. And then maybe we can do another jewelry run if there's still some available in the market back to New York and then we'll go to Buffalo. So yep, sell that nice little 540 profit. That is wonderful. Now, how is jewelry doing back in New York? Still doing good, still doing good. I see the price is up a little bit here in Boston. That's probably because I'm buying it. Uh, weapons, are those contraband in New York? They are not, but we'd actually take a loss on that. So no, back to jewelry. Let's just stick with what's working here. Go back to New York. Off we go. And unload some jewelry and then head off to Buffalo. Should make a nice healthy profit here. Oh yes, yeah, 610 profit. You know, I should have just done that a couple of times and gotten the better caboose, but that's fine, that's fine. So we're doing fine money-wise right now. Let's unlock the road between here and Buffalo, the road, the rail line between here and Buffalo. That's only 200, that's fine. Uh, oh, I actually have documentation for this. I'm sorry, I, I could have done this ages ago. Yes, I've forgotten what the, the, we're actually supposed to be going here. Yes, so that, great, that was free to unlock. Let's just go to Buffalo. How long is that gonna take? Two days, seven hours, that's not bad. Oh, oh, okay. We got bandits. If you wanna pass, then you gotta give us a little donation, and they're not even gonna take a donation, they're just gonna flat out attack us. Now, 
my first play of this game uh, when I was kind of test driving it, this should go fine. This is really just the game showing you what combat is like. So Walter and Ephraim are going to take the lead here. Let's move Walter over here, if you could, please, because that'll give you better line of sight. Oh, no, that gives you terrible line of sight, actually, but that's okay. Uh, so the little green arcs are showing you what they can and cannot hit, and they should handle this pretty well, pretty well. Um, we could destroy his cover if we had, you know, anything that could destroy his cover. I don't think uh, Walter's little pistol. Yeah, Ephraim's already taken out this guy. Ephraim, why don't you move over here? That might give you a better sight on this guy. No, that gives you terrible sight. How about moving over here? Does that give you sight? Yeah. And Walter, why don't you go here? Yeah, there we go. Now we got him on both sides. This guy's going to go right down. And we're barely taking any knocks. This is just the game showing off combat. We were basically guaranteed to win this. This will not go as easy later on. I learned that the hard way in my sort of separate playthrough that I've been doing just for fun. Uh, combat does get a little tricky later. Okay, we are in Buffalo. And ask people in Buffalo about your brother is the new quest. All right, well, let's, let's pick on Henry here. Hi, Henry. Oh, you're looking for a job. Well, tell me about yourself. You look like a Union soldier. That might come in handy. Uh, you are also sort of a sharpshootery guy. Uh, your ability is Stone Skin. That sounds cool. Allows the character to become invulnerable for a short period of time. That is handy. And I have the money to buy you, but I don't have space. Uh, the caboose only holds one crew member, and that's pretty much down to Ephraim. So, jeez, I'm really feeling I should have got the bigger caboose now, but, you know, here we are. Uh, Graham, do you have any information? Yes, you do. Blast those filthy bandits. What hope does this young country have if one can't even travel between cities without getting robbed? Well, you know, Graham, if you'd done the little combat minigame that I just did, combat went pretty easy. So I'm not sure what your problem is. My condolences. I'm looking for my brother Robert. Robert Reed. Maybe you've seen him. He was last seen in this city. Not only cargo, but people disappear. I have no time for this. I need to solve my own problems. Well, what is your problem? Is it a side quest I can help you with? Thanks to the Harris Treaty, Japan has finally opened up its ports. And as a collector of the exotic, I purchased several crates of Japanese trinkets, but the train carrying them was raided by bandits on the way here from Philadelphia. And I need to find my brother Robert Reed. He's a railroad engineer. Uh, well, you just said you weren't going to help me with that. So you want me to hunt down the bandits and retrieve what was stolen? I don't know how I feel about that. That would be a waste of time. An associate of mine is waiting in Philadelphia with one last crate that didn't make the initial shipment. Okay, so go get the other crate. You've got 20 days to do that. What's between... I'm going to come back to you in a second, Graham. I just want to find out what's between us and Philadelphia. And... Oh, okay. We could go right from New York to Philadelphia, and it only costs 200 to unlock that rail line. Uh, yeah, we will probably do that for you. I think we can handle that, Graham. I'm just going to get the brother quest out of the way. You also want a job. You know, sorry, you want a, uh, a ride. We're not taking any passengers right now because we don't have a passenger carriage. Frank. Yes. Okay. Do you know something about my brother? I'm looking for Walter Reed. Sounds familiar. Been spending most of my time in the saloon, though, so my memory is a bit fuzzy. Perhaps a small favor. Um... God, I don't want to give him a thousand dollars. That's ridiculous. All right, what do you have in mind? There's a lovely woman in Portland who happens to adore me. I haven't seen her since moving here a few weeks back. I've been sending her letters, but she never responds. Okay, so you want me to take her a letter in Portland. And there actually does not seem to be a time crunch to this. So we've got all the time in the world to deliver the letter. Okay, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll deliver your letter. Yeah, be be ready to tell me what I want to know when I come back. I'm telling you that right now, champ. So, uh, Henry Graham. Graham, you you were the one with the problem in Philadelphia, right? Uh, yes, let's just go. You know, we got to go back through your dialogue options. And hunting down that. Okay, so Philadelphia in 20 days, and we talked to Simon Keith. I think we got that. Let's take that quest... And then we know we're going to have to go through New York to do this. So what's going to do well in New York? Never go anywhere empty-handed. 
Uh, looks like tools are going to do great. We can buy them here for 33 and sell them for over 100 in New York. So let's grab a full load of tools if we can. Excellent. Let's go to New York. And actually, why don't we just unlock this now? It's only 200. That's fine. We'll more than pay for that with the tools we're about to sell in New York. So head over to New York. And then we'll probably go down to Philadelphia with an empty cart because I don't know what's going to sell there. We haven't been there yet, so we don't know what the market is like. Sell off our tools. Nice little 405 profit. Very well done there. Oh, we got some money now. We got some money now. Maybe I will invest. You know what? I know exactly what I'm going to do. Let's go to the depot. Let's see if we can upgrade our engine a little bit more. So we've got all these unlockable upgrade points here. So, for instance, improved firebox. By upgrading key firebox components, it is possible to reduce the coal consumption significantly. So we could spend less coal to go place to place. Engine power. Enhancing the engine gives additional horsepower to the locomotive. It increases the max load weight and max speed of your train. So that's a really good one to get. And then there's other little ones like armor. Uh, each additional layer of armor makes the carriage or locomotive more resistant to damage. That's good. Uh, making it more fireproof. That is excellent. Uh, storing more coal so we can travel longer. All good stuff. But I think what we want to focus on right now is that engine power. Yes, absolutely. And it's not even that expensive to upgrade it. 140 to get the engine up to 505 horsepower, and then another 170 to get it to 535. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So what can we pull now? We can pull 38.1 tons. That's really going to help with the, uh, the whole hauling freight thing. So we are going to... Let's just get down to Philadelphia and get this quest done. And then what we'll probably do is come back up along the coast to deliver that letter in Portland and make some money along the way. So down to Philadelphia. Don't really know anything about this city yet because we haven't been here. And who did we need to check in on? Oh, he just, he just, oh no, it's, it's our guy. It's our sort of storyteller guy. Uh, so yes, I have made an acquaintance who may help us with the license for the Buffalo Utica Railroad. He wants 170 for it. Uh, let me know if this is a good price. I'll be staying in Utica for the next 25 days. Yeah, that's a great price. Yeah, absolutely. We just got to get to Utica in 25 days. Okay. I think I've got a plan for that. I, I hope I do. It depends how this Philadelphia thing goes. So, yes, we're, we've got 25 days to get to Utica. I think we can do that. And uh, who was the guy? Japanese trinkets. Who do we need to talk to? Simon. Oh, Simon's right there. Excellent. Uh, yes, Mr. Schmidt mentioned he needed some transport, someone to transport his Japanese trinkets back to Buffalo. I'll have my man loaded onto your train. Okay, great, good. So, yes, thank you very much. Now, do we have a time crunch with that? Oh, we do, actually. 15 days. Okay, we got 15 days to get to Buffalo, and then 24 days to get to Utica. But if we go to Buffalo, we can get to Utica. So, okay, my plan to go up the coast making money is probably not the smartest plan because they're not kidding about these times. So we should go to Buffalo first. Let's just see if there's anything we can take to Buffalo. On the meantime, uh, cotton's looking pretty good right off the bat, and it's nice and light. Yeah, we could do well with cotton. Is there anything better we can do? How about jewelry? That's always fun. Um, you know, a good profit, but not a great profit in Buffalo. Tools? No, not tools. How about weapons? Are those contraband in Buffalo? They absolutely are. Tobacco? Eh, okay, we're going back to cotton. I mean, we're not going to make a ton of money, but it's a decent profit ratio. Take that, and can we go directly to Buffalo, or are we going to have to... No, we got all sorts of locks in the way. I should have thought of that. We should have done a New York run first. Um, can we get over there with the coal that we've got? Yes, we can. All right, so right off to Buffalo... Yeah, and we have to turn around in New York. A middle passenger carriage is available in Utica. Okay, nothing to write home about. We're not really doing passengers right at the moment. But once we've got this a little more opened up, we may look at that. Okay, so Buffalo. We need to talk to, oh goodness, Graham. Graham. Yes, here is your crate. Now, you're part of the bargain. 
Thank you. Well, we got some money out of that, so that's good. Uh, unload that cotton that we took here. Thank you. Good. All right. And now, what's our route? Should we go Boston to Utica? Or we could just go right to Utica. How much does that cost to unlock? Well, this is... See, he said he was going to give us the license for Utica to Buffalo. So, and he was going to give that for 170 So why would we pay 200 for it? Our best move is to go back to Boston, unlock this one for only 150 In fact, I'm just going to go ahead and do that right now. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Give me that. And let's see if there's anything we can take to Boston on the way. What's selling well in Boston these days? Uh, didn't jewelry do well? No, actually, jewelry's terrible. It was the other way around. Uh, New York loved jewelry. Food, cotton. How about medicine? No, medicine. Well, actually, medicine's not terrible. Yeah, that's fine. It's relatively lighter. Sure. Yeah, we'll take that. Absolutely, we'll take that. Cleaned him out of medicine in Buffalo. There is no more medicine in Buffalo. Now, can we get directly to Boston? Yes, we can. So we have enough coal to do that. And when we get to Boston, we may do a couple more upgrades to the engine. Maybe we can get our coal consumption down. That will help. Okay, so sell off the medicine. Sell off the medicine. Yep. And while I'm here, let's just uh, wait until daylight. Yep, wait until opening hours. City Hall, do you have anything you need taken to Utica? Because I'm going there. No, 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 New York, New York, Portland, Portland, Portland. And I'm not going to be able to do those ones at the bottom because my reputation isn't high enough yet. Okay, um, that is actually a good run. Boston to New York in how many days? Oh, one day, 23 hours. Wow, you ain't kidding about that. We just have to race down to Boston, but let's get let's get this Buffalo Utica Railroad license thing taken care of, just in case we run out of time. Um, we have not been to Utica, so we have no idea what's going to sell well. So unfortunately, we are going to go empty-handed over to Utica. Thank you. And what lives in Utica apart from our quest target? So, Graham, are you here? Did, what, what were we supposed to do? Talk to Jeremiah. Oh, not Graham. Graham. Graham was the other guy. Yes, here you go. Wonderful. I will finish the deal. Finally, the Buffalo Utica Railroad is open to us. Okay, goodbye. So that was a whole lot of running around to save 30 bucks, but that's cool. Whatever. <laughs> just running around like crazy to save $30. I could have just bought it for $200. Um, City Hall. Wait, you know what? Hold on. First things first, because we got a decent amount of money. Let's do some more upgrades to the engine. Oh, they have a new engine. The John Bull 420. What? What's that when it's at home? Oh, that is pretty good. And I I am immediately a fan of any game when you're comparing inventory items or anything of the like that just immediately tells you what the benefits or not benefits are. Uh, so right off the bat, we've got an immediate comparison to our own engine, and I love that. I, it just so saves so much time going back and forth. So what would we get if we bought this engine? We're going to have a better max pulling rate of 7.8 tons. That is nice. Uh, we have a slightly larger coal capacity, definitely a lot better horsepower. That part is nice, but it weighs more. So what we're going to make up in max pulling weight, we're going to lose a little bit in the actual weight of the engine itself. So, you know, we're, we're still come out ahead, but it's a little better armored. Uh, okay. It's not for 2,200. I don't, you know, I don't know if that's something we're going to jump all over when we can just upgrade what we have right now. We will definitely be getting a better engine than this but for this early game let's just upgrade what we have what would be a good yeah let's reduce our coal consumption that sounds like a really good thing to be doing because that will save us you know sort of background money that we're saving with the autofill on coal okay back to the station we've completed you we've completed you so now we could go back to Buffalo and ask people about our brother again. Let's just knock out this 
Portland nonsense, um, this lovelorn guy here. What could we sell in Portland that would be good? Uh, how about tools? Everybody loves tools. Eh, good profit, not great profit. Jewelry? Jewelry's terrible. Uh, oh, alcohol. And I don't think anything is contraband in Portland. Yeah, we, we, we'd make a profit, not a great profit, though. How about food? Nope, definitely not food. So tools, yeah, I get it's yeah, six and one half dozen of the other. We'll just take some tools. That's fine. That's fine. We're not going to make an enormous profit, but we'll make some money. And that's the important thing. Off to Portland. Yep, Portland, please. Is that guy still chopping down the same tree? Yep, he just chops down the same tree day after day. Oh, it's a good life. All right, market. Unload. Yes, please. Ah, we, we did okay on that. 360 profit. That's not bad. Back to the station. And I'm going to assume a letter is going to go to someone named Mary. Because, well, you know, we're open-minded in 2018. But in the 1860s, I don't think a love letter between two guys was going to go over as well as it might today. Sir, please do not stare at me like that. My fiancé is a skilled gunman. Oh, okay. I'm, I just met your fiancé in Buffalo, and, and here's a letter. He doesn't live in Buffalo. He lives here. Wait, the man who wrote this letter wouldn't happen to be Frank, would he? Yep, older-looking man, graying beard. That filthy man has no shame. I had him arrested in Boston after I noticed he's been following me around. Ever since then, he's been asking people on their way for, here from Buffalo to deliver these pathetic pathetic letters to me. Why would you help him? Frank said he'd offer me information if I delivered the letter to you. You wouldn't happen to know of Robert Reed, would you? I didn't meet a Robert Reed, but recently there were many engineers here working on a project. One of them was trying to convince me to visit their camp at the railroad between Buffalo and Cleveland. Your brother might be there. Okay, so somewhere between Buffalo and Cleveland, we might find our brother. All right, good enough. Good enough. Um, so let's see. We've done that, and we've done that. And we just have to go back to Frank and Buffalo, and then we're going to search for Robert between Buffalo and Cleveland, and we'll see if we can make some money on the way. And that's as good a place as any to leave it for now. We'll pick it up again next time. Until then, I'm Dave. Thank you, as always, for joining me in the wee hours, and we'll see you next time.